Hello everyone, um, welcome to Referencing APA 7th. Um, my name is Fahin Alam and I'm the Academic and Research Librarian for Nursing and Midwifery and I will be doing your presentation and your class today. Um, this is a re-record of the session that we did yesterday. There was many technical difficulties. Um, when the slides were uploaded into Collaborate, they had reformatted and changed the format of some of the references. So I have re-recorded this for you, but essentially you will be learning the same thing. I will also be sending these slides and this presentation to you all um, in, by the end of this week. So watch this space. Before we get started, um, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land in which we are meeting today and pay respects to elders both past and present. Um, and that extends that respect to all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples. And I'm currently in Gadigal land in Sydney. Anyway, let's get started. The first question we often get, um, get is, what is it and why do we reference? So referencing gives recognition to existing work and builds ideas of each other. Um, it contributes to a whole scholarly conversation and people deserve recognition. So essentially when you're at university, you're building upon each other's ideas to create something unique, something you can share with the community and with the research community as well. It might not feel like it, but you are using other people's ideas to learn, to gain understanding of the subject that you are in. And that is why we need to reference. Another reason is academic integrity. Um, what that means is that we need to ensure that you are not copying someone else's work. Um, people have worked very hard for their work and it's, it would be very unfair if we were able to just copy and paste and submit that as our own work. So academic integrity is also one of the reasons why we reference. So there are two reason um, places in your assignment that you would reference. You would reference when you're paraphrasing. You would also reference when you're quoting. Um, and paraphrasing is when you use ideas from a source and make them into your own words. You've read something, you liked it, and you wanted to put it into your assignment, but you make it into your own words. Paraphrasing is recommended more than quoting um, in most uh, subjects. It obviously would depend on your assignment and depend on the structure of your assignment and whatever unit you're doing, but paraphrasing is recommended more than actually quoting. But it also depends how you're going to write your um, assignment and your work. So with paraphrasing, there are two ways to reference. Um, that you reference within the brackets, or you can reference with the author, with the bracket, or with the date, the year, in the brackets and that really depends on your sentence structure. I've got two examples here right now and they are while some have argued that cosmopolitanism is a rich and global form of identity appear comma 2006 and you can continue the rest of the sentence to make your point. Well, you can also start your sentence with the authors or a study. However, a more recent study by Mockler and Stacey in brackets 2020 showed blah, 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 blah. And you end up talking about whatever research they've done. Um, that's essentially what paraphrasing is. It's a great way to learn key concepts, um, key theories for your area of study. And that's how you will show your um, lecturer or your tutor and your teachers that you know you understand the core stuff of um, the core theories of your unit, as well as being able to build upon it. The next area which you reference um, is when you're quoting an exact phrase that you use. And an exact phrase can be like an awesome quote in a book or, or in a journal article that you think was like, oh, this is awesome. Um, I can't reword this because it just makes the perfect point about what I'm trying to say. Um, and you just need to put it into your assignment. In that case, um, you would, there are many ways to lay out your um, quotations and the rules. So I suggest you also look into the referencing guide to read these rules as well. Because if a quotation is more than 40 words, you'll have to display it a little bit differently. 
Um, but in, in general, most of your quotes shouldn't be longer than a sentence. So this is how you would um, do an in-text reference. However, Smith's philosophical and moral outlook could be conflated with macro-stoicism. And that would be Nussbaum, comma, 2019, comma, page 164. So when you've quoted something, you have to give your reader, your marker, um, the exact location of where you got that quote from. In instances when there are no page numbers, you put paragraph number. So instead of P, you put P-A-R-A, -A, para, full stop, you know, fifth paragraph or sixth paragraph. That's how you would do it. And if you're quoting something out of a video, you just put the timestamp. So 23 semicolon 30 seconds. It's all in the referencing guide and it will show you how to do it in there. So these are the main areas that we, in which you would need to reference. So what I show you, had shown you before was in-text referencing. And whatever you do your in-text, you have to put into your reference list. Now, these are two examples, two um, other examples that you I've given you that you can have a quick read of. I'll give you some time. As you can see, there's two different references here. One is a paraphrase and the other is a direct quote. Um, what you'll notice here is that in the first um, bit right here, the need to upskill through self-learning peer-led professional development sessions as peer-led PD sessions are often described as beneficial, so on and so forth. You've got two references here. So, and they're separated by a semicolon. So what happens, like, what if you re read a few articles that all talk about the same thing and they all have the same idea and you have paraphrased all three or four articles um, to put into your assignment? You would then put your in-text references in like that, in order of date from the most recent to the latest. And the other one is... Um, the quotations. What you'll also notice here is I've also put square brackets here. What that square bracket does inside the quotation is to just change the grammar. So sometimes the grammar doesn't make sense in your sentence structure and you're allowed to change the grammar inside a quotation. Okay, so the original quote could have been into their modes of understanding. I've just changed their into our. You're, you can do that. And the reference here has two authors and you put an ampersand in between them when it's two authors. There are author rules and we will go through them um, later on. So here are three examples of in-text citations and only one of them is correct. I'll give you a bit of time to have a read through and just choose, let me know which one you choose. If you have chosen C, you are correct. C is the only one that is correct, only simply because they've placed the year in the right place. The sentence structure, it makes sense. When you're quoting in, in, in sample B, you can't just put argues Watson 2001. No, it's a quote. And you have to put the reference right after the quote here. And you also have to put page numbers. And same thing with this. The year is in the wrong spot. Author rules is what we're going to go through a little bit. So if there's more than one author, um, there's rules into how to write them into your in-text citation. Note that if you are, if there are, you know, 
seven authors to a book or a resource or a journal article in your reference list you have to list all of them but for in text you don't it just makes your work too messy so if there is um, a resource that you're using between three to 20 authors you have to put at all after the first author Okay, look at all these examples here. So that is the author rule. If, you're, if you've only just got two authors, you put ampersands in between if you're writing in the brackets. If it's within the sentence, like a narrative citation here, you put and. You shouldn't really use too much abbreviation in your essay writing. Okay, um, in terms of organizations that have um, things like DFAD or AIHW, uh, you can write it like this. So the first time you mention them, you have to write the whole thing, like the Australian Bureau of Statistics, the whole thing. And every second time you can do ABS 2018. When it comes to citation inside of brackets, you have to do it like this. So you write Australian Bureau of Statistics or Australian Institute of Health and Welfare. And in the square brackets, you write the little acronym that they have, okay? And every subsequent citation is that as well. This is also in your referencing guide. So there are three main steps to referencing, okay? And the first step is to find the referencing guide. I assume you know uh, where to find that, but I will show you as well shortly. Um, you need to find the referencing guide. Now, the CDU APA 7th referencing guide, you can download or you can, you know, if you just in a rush or just don't have the guide with you or you haven't downloaded it or you just can't access it, there's a difference between the images in our CDU APA 7th guide than normal APA 7th, okay? Um, otherwise, everything else falls in line with the standard APA 7th um, guide that there is. And I might confuse you a little bit, but the actual APA 7th guide is about 350 pages. So what we've done, we've got the most common questions, most common formats in the CDU APA guide. The only thing we've deviated, and it's, it's exactly the same, everything is from the 300 page APA 7th guide that we've put in. The only change that we've made to make your life a little bit easier is how to reference images. So when it comes to images, please stick to the CDU APA 7th guide that we have provided on the library website. Images, graphs, like that, all of that kind of stuff. Graphs, tables, images, whatever you can think of that, those stuff, we have changed the format a little bit to make it uniquely CDU APA 7th. Otherwise, when it comes to books, journals, videos, website, APA 7th, that's the standard APA 7th that we've put in for you in the guide. So in most cases, if you're having an issue with referencing, you can just Google the question, you know, how to reference APA 7th journal article, and you can, it doesn't matter what comes up, the correct format will turn up, okay, if you don't have the CDU APA 7th guide. The only difference is images, okay, images, graphs, and tables. Um, the second step is by far the most important step to referencing. Um, identify the resource. You need to identify the resource correctly. And this is very important. Um, identifying the resource will depend on what the layout of your reference will be at the end of your assignment. Um, because if you've identified it incorrectly, your reference will be incorrect, okay? So once you've identified it, you need to get all the data that you need from it for your reference. And next step is you simply follow the format that's in a referencing guide, in the APA 7 referencing guide, okay? 
So the referencing guide is on our library website. You just simply click on referencing on the library website and you just click on APA 7 once you get into that page. The guide is up here. Right. Here in the corner, sorry, got distracted by something. Um, it's right here and you can download it, you can print it out, whatever you like. I suggest having a good look through it. You'd be surprised the amount of questions you have can be answered via the referencing guide over here, okay? You need to read through it, like just even a quick scan of what type of references they are and where to go and how to find it, it will be in this guide. It is in there. There are there's all the rules, all the tricks, or like when you know, what do I do if there's no date? Um, what do I do if there's no like um, title or the author's missing? All that information is in the referencing guide. Or what do I do if it's if I've got two texts or two um, resources with the same author, uh, but they have different years or same years? It will tell you how to do it in the referencing guide. It's quite detailed. And the resource we have is what does APA referencing look like? It's a sample essay. Um, and it shows you what a reference list looks like and how you should be referencing in text. And it's got um, little annotations on it. We've also got the referencing tool, which um, is also like another referencing guide. It's interactive. Um, you can go in it and it will you know, take you through all the referencing. Um, okay, the next thing you need for the things you need for a reference. Generally, you need author slash company, year or date of publication, title, publisher. In some cases, you'll also need page numbers, volume and issue number, URL or DOI. Um, a DOI is a digital object identifier, which is like a unique um, identifier for digital artifacts, everything that's been digitized. It means that link can never be broken if you use a DOI. There are rules with DOIs and URLs and um, we will go through them as well. So we're gonna go through some common things that you will need to reference for your assignments. The first thing is a journal article. Let's just have a quick read of it. All right, so with a journal article, I will, I like to reiterate that a journal article is not a newspaper article. Um, it is a common mistake made by high school, um, first year students. Um, a journal article is not a newspaper article, okay. A journal article is a piece of research. Uh, it could, it's generally scientific. It could be, well, fast social sciences are science as well. So it's generally scientific. It's a research paper that gets that gets put through a publishing criteria and it generally gets peer reviewed, okay? That's what a journal article is. And a lot of journal articles are in databases, okay? Most of them can't be found through a simple Google search unless you're using Google Scholar and it's um, via open access. But the best place to find journal articles is through the library website, okay? And this is how you would reference it. So notice how I've got the DOI shown over there. It's hyperlinked and that's how you would always, all your URLs and DOIs need to be hyperlinked. Um, you also need an indentation, which is right here. Um, and how you achieve that is once you've copy pasted your reference or like you've written your reference in, um, you just press command T on a MacBook or control T on a um, Word document. Microsoft, sorry, not Word document on a Microsoft computer, des desktop. I'm a Mac girl, it's very obvious. <laughs> in some cases, a lot of journal articles won't have a volume number or an issue number. 
Um, in some, it's very rare. In some cases, you won't have that. Instead, they'll have something like summer edition or spring edition or um, you know winter issue and stuff like that. Um, you just put that in. So this is what a journal article will look like when you go in. I found this through a um, through library search. And as you can see, all the details that you need for your reference are actually at the top here. Okay, you've got your DOI, you've got your um, authors, you've got the title, you've also got the, the journal name. And then you have the volume and issue number here, as well as the page, page range as well. I'll let you have a quick read so you can kind of sort out where to find things. In some cases with these um, journal articles, the data might actually be at the bottom. So I always suggest scroll down to the bottom of the page um, to find your DOIs and find um, all that other extra information that you need. Okay. You, a lot of people ask questions about, oh my God, I can't find anything about this reference. And you'd be surprised that all they had to do was scroll down to the bottom of the page. So really do a bit of detective work and like have a look at the bottom on the sides, even depending on the interface, on the sides, left hand, right hand, all the information will be there. Okay, and the next thing, um, <clears throat> you'll come to is books. Um, books are fairly simple. If it's a physical book and not an ebook, um, you get rid of the URL or DOI. Okay, no URL or DOI if it's just a physical book. You know, you got it from the library or you bought it and you bred it and um, you need to reference it. If it's a, a digital book, like an ebook, in most cases, they will have a DOI. Okay. Um, in cases where they don't have a DOI and if you found it through Google Books, you just put the URL in. Um, and if there's none, you don't put, put anything in from memory. Yes, you don't. Just let you have a read of the reference. Um, what you'll notice is in the little skeleton up here, there is addition in brackets, but because this book, this example doesn't have an addition, you just leave it out. If it's second edition, you would obviously put that in. Um, in books, most in physical books, most of this information is on the front cover, the spine, or just inside the front cover. All right. Oops. Book chapters. Now, this is a very uh, interesting reference, and it's something I always have to look at the guide for because I make mistakes with this all the time. Um, with book chapters, the reference is a bit complicated, and you might be confused as to why you would reference a book chapter any different from an actual book. Well, in a lot of scientific books and in academia, a lot of peer-reviewed books, um, each chapter can be written by a different person or persons, people. Um, so the whole entire book would have an editor that puts the entire book together and different people would be writing each chapter. Um, so the reference is a bit complicated, so you'll have to look carefully. The author of the chapter is here, Dunning T, okay, T Dunnings. Notice I put the surname and then first name over here. First name is the initial. Year, title of the chapter, right? And then in. And then you put A.J. Sinclair, T. 
T. Dunnings, L. Rodriguez, so on and so forth. Now, these are the editors of the book and you put the initials of their first name first and then their last name. And in brackets, you put, if there's one editor, you don't put S. If there's two, more than, you know, more than one, you put S in brackets. The name of the book, the page range, and the publisher, publisher. LTT is meant to be up there, I just could not fix it. <laughs> you don't, you won't have issues formatting um, references in Word. It's only on PowerPoint where they become a bit difficult. If there is a URL, um, sorry, if it is an online ebook, you put the DOI in. If it isn't, you just leave it out. So he is um, an example of a chapter of a book. As you'll notice, most of the information is up here. Okay. And this is the book, the actual book. In most cases from your reading list, you will be taken to this page, not the page before when you've been given a chapter. Um, this is purely because, this is purely based on the platform the book is on. So in many cases, you might need to do a little bit of investigating, like find out where that book chapter is from. Because here, there is no indication that each chapter is written by a different person. So you'd have to scroll down and then go into the chapter and see and compare with the main page and you'll figure it out. It's a bit of detective work, but um, um, you'll figure it out. It's You'll get used to it. One of the key giveaways that um, this is a book chapter with multiple authors inside is that on the side, you'll have editors. Right, moving on. Images from an online collection or gallery. Now, this is what I was talking about um, when it comes to the only thing CDU APA 7th has changed from the original APA 7th is the images. Um, and how to reference and lay out images. It's very complicated. It's complicated in every referencing style, okay? Um, <laughs> but we've tried to make it easier for you and change the style. So this is something, if you don't, don't Google, stick to the CDU APA 7th PDF that you find on the library website. Now there's three things to an image reference, and this is from an online collection or gallery. And when I mean an online collection or gallery, I mean things like Flickr or like a photography gallery, um, you know, databases that are specifically for images and photo photos. Okay, Google Images is not an online collection or gallery. Just a FYI. Google Images is not. If what you'll notice is if you click on an image on Google Images, it takes you to a website. So therefore it is not an online collection or gallery. Um, so with image attributions, um, that is a little, uh, what are they called? The little caption that you put under the image, okay? You need to attribute, uh, like give it attribution as to where it's from, what it, um, you know, what is it, the author, publisher, et cetera, et cetera. So this is what it looks like under the image. And you can make this as small as you want. I mean, not too small. They need to be able to read it and zoom in and read it, your markers. But it just needs to be under the image. And you put title of image in italics format, author, A is the first name, initial, last name, ye, publisher, DOI or URL, and the license. And the license is like the copyright, you know, stuff. Um, so in image galleries, it's very, it tells you what copyright license it has. Now, as a student doing your assignments, you don't really need to worry about copyright. I mean, just put it in, it's fine, but you don't need to worry about it simply because you are not publishing. This is for an assignment and it's just for you and it's just for your tutors to read. If you are publishing something or if you are actually going to print something out and make it into a poster and you know 
profit from it or promote something, that's an entirely different story. And I would suggest you get in touch with the library to understand those copyright issues. But in most cases, you do not need to worry about it. Even if it's a pretend promotional poster, you don't need to worry about it that much, but still put it into your image attribution. Um, anyway, if you're going to refer to the image constantly, this is the in-text. Okay, author, year. And in the reference is your author, year, title of image, format, publisher, DOI or URL. And I'll show you what I mean by format and publisher. Here we go. The really two cute zebra finches. And yeah. Just have a read through it. Notice the format is a photo um, photograph. Um, if it was a graph, you just put graph. If it was a painting, you put painting. Um, mixed media, art, whatever. Okay. The next one is image as part of a resource. So this is when you get use an image from a journal article, from a website, from a book, from a brochure, all of that. Um, so in your reference list, follow the format where you get the image. That is, if the image is from a ref from website, you reference the website in the reference list. You follow the website format. Now, I'm not going to give you as many examples here because depending on where you get it from, the attribution is different. Okay, so I really suggest you go to page 22 of the referencing guide and it showcases different formats. Okay, it will show you how to do the attribution if you get it from a journal article, it will show you how to do an attribution if you get it from a, um, you know, website or even uh, a book. Okay, it's, it's different and will be here forever if I go through every single bit of it. But the page 22 will um, explains it in detail. And like I said, you just follow the format. Um, so this is what the reference would look like. Uh, image attribution. This is from a website. Notice that there's no date here because the website didn't have a date. And this is how you do it. Um, government reports and documents. Now, this is where it gets a little bit, um, I wouldn't say confusing, a little bit confusing actually with government reports and documents. You may come across a government report with six different government agencies on it. Who is the author then? You know, who is the organization? Who is the publisher? Who is who? Is who? In those cases, I would just choose the most relevant one. Okay, um, so this report that I've shown you right here is from the A Australian Institute of Health and Welfare. What you'll notice here at the top is Australian Government, Australian Institute of Health and Welfare over here. If the Australian Government is the publisher on the organisation, the Australian Institute of Health and Welfare is the author or the organization here in this case. Okay. Let's go look. Something like this. Australian Institute of Health and Welfare date. Um, the title of the report and Australian government as the publisher. I'm sorry, that's cut off a little bit. And then the URL. But here's another example right here I've got, this report. Notice that the author is not an organisation. These people, um, Kay Jenner, might work at the Reserve Bank of Australia right here. So they're the organisation slash publisher. Okay, so a different set of authors 
wrote for the Reserve Bank of Australia. So this is still a government report. Some reports have um, report numbers and you just put them in brackets after the name. Okay, and the URL. And then you have websites. Same concept about, you know, site name slash organization. You wanted to do this website, for example. Notice how the, the website is actually Reserve Bank of Australia, but the author for this page is Rachel, um, this uh, resource is actually Rachel Adeney, this page. So you would put her as the author and then you put Reserve Bank of Australia as um, the organization. If the organization and the author is the same, you only put the author, you don't need to put organization in. For example, website. Now the first one, Rachel Adney's um, page for the Reserve Bank of Australia, she, they had a specific date. So you'd write the specific date for websites if possible. Not all websites have specific dates, that's okay. And notice here that the World Health Organization is the author and the organization, so you only mention them once. Yeah, there we go. And then onto your reference list. So a reference list is always, the title is always centered and bolded. Um, it's always in alphabetical order by author. Make sure it's double spaced and make sure it has a hanging indent in which I've shown you in all the previous ones. Um, and make sure all the URLs or DOIs are hyperlinked. Okay. Um, so that's how you would set your reference list out. I will show you what a reference list looks like. Oop, give me a second. And just scroll down and this is what a reference list looks like. And it's even got where in the guide you have to look to read about it. It's all double spaced. I'm also going to show you another common few things that we get. Um, learn all of this section, all the tips and tricks for referencing and um, in-text citation is in here. Same author, but different dates. Same author and the same date. Yeah. Same author and no date. Apologies. Um, explaining your abbreviations. It's all in here. And in some cases, in some journal articles or online resources, you might see the DOI is formatted like this. Make sure you change it to this format. It's as simple as copy and pasting this section, sorry, this section after the slash, after the org. That's how you convert it. Everything's right here. See, using a quote of more than 40 words or more. You know, changing a quote to make it grammatically fit. All of it is in there. So it's, it's pretty comprehensive, very comprehensive, but, and it's the same as general APA seventh guide, except for images, okay? 
except for images. This is the only thing we've changed from the actual APA 7th guide. Okay. If you have documents from LearnLine, um, it depends what it is. What I would do now, if it's a PowerPoint or something that was made by a lecturer, yeah, that's a LearnLine document. You know, if they've written a paragraph within your LearnLine modules, that is a LearnLine, um, you know, material in a sense. And this, this is how you would reference it. However, if you're lecturer or tutor has uploaded a PDF or a report, a government report onto your learn line, that is not considered a learn line document. That is considered a government report and you would um, follow, follow that um, structure. If you'd be like, oh, well, I don't know where exactly that report is located, where it's from, in most cases, if you just Google the report title, it'll tell you exactly which government department did it. It'll tell you where to find it and give you the URL. So it's a bit of detective work, but that's how you would do it. Anything that's embedded into your um, LearnLine unit. For example, you wouldn't reference a YouTube video within LearnLine as LearnLine document or a LearnLine material. You would reference it as a YouTube video, which is somewhere up here. I believe, where is it? Yeah, YouTube or streaming video. Okay. And so on and so forth. Most of the time when I'm having trouble referencing, I straight up Google it. APA 7, no title. Source with no title. You can very much use this information. It's, it might be from another university, but it's fine. But the only thing, and I'll reiterate again, the only thing you shouldn't Google because we've changed it for you is images, okay? And I'll go back to the referencing guide. Now, like I said, missing information, there is a table in our referencing guide at the bottom that tells you what to do. Uh, but like I've said before, you can always just Google it and it'll give you an answer. Sorry, excuse me. Give you an answer, that's APA 7th. Now, this is a cool game, and I always recommend my students to play it. Um, it's called RefQuest, and I'll show you in a bit um, what it does. It was created by Western Sydney University, and it takes account into pedagogy, and it's won numerous awards. Um, and it's actually a referencing game, and it's a very cool. It's a bit old school, but I love it. They use, like, you know, those little pixelated games where you go on missions and stuff like that, and it teaches you how to reference. And I will show you how it is done. It's a bit campy, but it's awesome. You can just Google it and you'll find it. I'm just going to put my volume down a bit because it's quite loud. and you click to start. There we go. And you start. And you click APA 7. It's a monster fighting game, which you um, you fight the monsters every time you get it correct, get the reference correct. So the first thing we go through is a book.
and each level has a different way of playing it, so you'll have to read the instructions. Okay, let's do this. There's only one change here, so it's quite simple. And you submit it. Awesome! He's dead! Which one do you think it is? And you've completed your level. And you've completed your level. So essentially this game just um, takes you through, you know, the most common referencing um, formats. And it's actually quite helpful. It's super fun. And you'll start to notice a pattern with your references. Be like, oh, oh, that makes sense. You know, author comes first generally. And then you, I need to look for the title. I need to look for this and blah, blah, blah. And you'll get used to it. The more you do it, the more you're used to it. I'm not perfect. I still make mistakes as well. Okay. And with referencing, you just have to get your referencing guide out and just follow it. Okay. And like I said, you'll get more, the more you do it, the more confident you'll get it. And it's, it's, it's like a, it's a bit of a treasure hunt sometimes. Sometimes you might have to do a bit of hunting for, you know, finding the information on your references. Like, oh, I found this really great resource, but I don't know where it's from, what it does. And you're going to have to do a little bit of investigating. And that's fine. That's, that's just what research is and finding your resources are. Um, the other thing you can do with your, uh, before I get to EndNote, the other thing you can do with your references, it's not recommended purely because most of the time it's wrong, but, but there is, you'll find some of your, um, the, the, the data that you need for your references will be in this. For example, actually, no, I'm not gonna go through that. I've done a nursing and diabetes search. I'm just gonna log in. And let's just say I wanted to read this, okay? And I wanted to use this. You can go on citations here and choose whatever style you need. There is a note here, remember to check citations for accuracy before including them in your work. Okay, this is a journal, not a journal article. So that's why it's referenced like that. So you'll get to a point where, actually, let me find a journal article. We'll get to a point where you'll, where you'll notice that, you'll start to notice mistakes in the references given to you. There we go. There is something wrong with this reference already, but the information is there. <laughs> there is something very wrong for, with this reference. So this is why I don't suggest you use it. I mean, you can have a look at it and see, you know, if the details are right and you're not sure what's happening, you know, and you copy it, but then you'd have to edit it, okay? You need to make sure you edit it. Remember to check citations for accuracy before including them in your work. This is wrong. I mean, they're missing Al Alanazi's um, first name. Simple. There's no. There's 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 no issue number. There's no link. There's no nothing. So it's always best to go online into the journal article or whatever resource you're doing. And you might be wondering if all of them are like that. No. It's not. I'm just hoping I find a good example. This one is more or less, yes, this one's correct. 
Actually, no, it's not correct. I take that back. They've missed the first name of this author. They've missed it here as well. I believe. Yes, Andrew R. They've missed it. I'm showing you that examples, but it's a good thing that I am because it'll show you that these are not accurate. Now, going back to our presentation, um, EndNote, you might have noticed I have not mentioned EndNote at all. EndNote, I do not recommend for any undergrad student unless they're doing honours. I do not recommend for first years especially at all because EndNote will screw you over. Uh, that's, uh, that's the end of it. It will, if you do not know how to master EndNote, it will become your master essentially. Um, it can corrupt your assignment files. It can make sure it gives you wrong references. If you have no idea what you're doing, it's just a pain in the backside if you're if you don't know how to use it. And it takes it takes a very long time for you to become an EndNote expert. It's taken me five six years, and even then, sometimes we get asked these we have these EndNote problems which take days to solve because we're just not sure, and you have to go through the discussion boards to find answers. Um, it's, it's not something I recommend. And most of the times you won't be asked to do use more than 10, um, you know, uh, peer reviewed references and all 10 citations in a sense, you won't be, uh, the maximum amount of resources might be 10 for your assignment. And it's easier to just reference it by hand instead of using EndNote. And the thing is, like I said, you have to get to a point where you can recognize the mistakes in the reference. Okay, and if you if you if you don't have that ability yet, which is fine, no one expects you to at this stage. Um, it becomes really hard. So the first thing you need to do is before you ever ever think about using EndNote, is to make sure you understand the core. So you need to count before you need to know how to multiply. Okay, so that's that's my. That's the library stance on EndNote. Do not, we do not teach it to undergrads. It's not recommended at all. It's great, powerful tool for researchers that use hundreds of references for their work, um, PhD students, and even honor students. It's great for that. Um, other than that, please do not even attempt it at this stage. Right. Any questions you can call or you can just email us the library. This is the preferred one, ask the library at cdu.edu. You will come across some tricky referencing um, queries and questions, things that don't make sense. And that's fine. You know, the librarians will, you know, pull out the big fat APA 7th book and try to find an answer for you there. There's a lot of things that aren't in the guide, but the most basic and the most common things are covered in the guide as well. So. If you have any questions or you're really just unsure, just email us the library and they can help you out. Okay, so that's the end of the session. Um, and this presentation and the PowerPoint will be sent to you. We'll see you next time. And if you ever need help, like I said, you just have to email us the library or give us a call.